Alex Ezrito from Kettle Bottom Outdoors, and today we're going to show you how to set up your own arrow. When it comes to arrow selection, there's hundreds of different arrows you can buy. You could buy aluminum, you could buy carbon, you could buy graphite. I personally shoot the Full Metal Jacket 5mm by Easton. These Full Metal Jackets, it's got the carbon, like your standard arrow, on the inside of the arrow. And on the outside is this aluminum alloy jacket um, that helps for better flight, uh, more aerodynamic. Why I like this arrow so much is I do a lot of target shooting. Um, so pulling out of the target, uh, having this metal on the outside, uh, it makes, makes for easier pulling out when you're shooting a uh, high quantity. So once you have purchased your arrows, uh, you want to know what your arrow length is. For this, you're gonna need the arrow knocked into your bow and you're gonna need a Sharpie. Um, it's always great to have a buddy by you, safe distance away when you pull your bow back and you're going to mark the arrow dead center of the shelf. I like that for when you pull the bow back, um, you don't have the broadhead or feel point back behind your hand. Uh, when you screw on your point, it'll be in front of your hand. So if you do accidentally send that bow off um, or dry fire or accidentally release the bow, um, that arrow won't be going into your hand. It'll be a safe distance um, away from your hand. So you're gonna pull your bow back And you're gonna have someone knock a little marker dead center of that shaft. So I went ahead and measured my shaft here and I am 27 and 15 16 inches perfectly right on the button. Uh, one thing you wanna make sure you remember is when you are measuring is you do not wanna include this knock because you could purchase certain knocks that have different sizes so you want to make sure that you're cutting your shaft exactly the same every single time, bare shaft only. Now that you have your arrow bare shaft length, um, I see guys use their teeth to try to pull these knocks out. Um, it's best to use a pair of pliers um, so you're not going to be scoring the end of this knock. Because um, when you change one thing, you change everything. And doing a little cut like that could actually crack the knock. So I like to put it over my shirt and then I'll just take it and just do a straight pull could use a towel if you have it and now we have the knock which I'll hold off to the side and uh, I'll go through and I'll do all of my arrows the arrow saw that I'm using today is a is a Weston arrow saw when cutting um, you want to make sure that you are set up on your actual saw with the correct length once you have that correct length you then are going to just do a dry run with the saw off make sure everything's lined up perfectly and from there you will then start the saw and start, start doing your cuts. And that saw is going to be spinning towards me or spinning counterclockwise. So I'm going to be putting that arrow into the saw, laying it, making sure it's level the entire time, and spinning that arrow towards the blade versus going with the blade. Um, this will go, uh, give us a, a lot uh, cleaner cut. Now that you have your arrows cut to the exact length that you need for your bow, Next, you're going to want to make sure you square the end that was cut. Uh, when I bought these arrows, it, it did come with this small bag. The sanding stone that Easton includes on all their arrows, uh, along with their inserts, um, is very handy. What you want to do is you want to find a mat or something that's going to really hold that sanding tool in place. And you want to make sure your arrow is perfectly vertical here. Um, and then you're just going to start slowly spinning it, trying to keep it as perfectly upright as you can. I usually give it about 10 back and forth on the sanding stone, blow it off, and give it a look to see visually if there are any burrs. You also um, should look at this, it's called an ASD by G5. Um, it's ASD stands for Arrow Squaring Device. Um, so you're going to lay this flat on the table and you got a perfect 90 degrees um, and this makes it um, even more precise. When it comes to archery, precision is everything. So on this tool, you want to place the arrow on just as so and make sure you're on a nice flat surface here um, and then you're going to grasp this thing and, and give, it, give it some turns back and forth. making sure that that tool stays perfectly still. 
Now the best way to check to make sure that this is perfectly square is I like to take a fuel point. This is just a 100 grain standard fuel point. And I will put it down into the arrow and see if I see any gaps, any burrs, anything that doesn't look, um, it look flush. And it looks pretty good to me. So now that we have the arrows cut, uh, we have gone ahead and squared the arrows with the ASD tool along with the sanding stone and then thoroughly cleaned it with either um, a specific cleaning wipe or just acetone on a paper towel. Um, we are now ready to add the insert into the arrow. So the epoxy that was given to us um, they give you a lot more than what you need. Um, on this actual insert, you'll see that there are roughly four different sections. I like to just put enough epoxy to make it to the first two sections. Um, and then when you slide that arrow, uh, insert down into that arrow, um, the rest of that glue will, will stick to the rest of that insert. You don't need much, less is more. Then we will use the tool. This is the hit tool. And you will slide that right down into the arrow until it stops completely. And then you're going to pull that out. I like to keep a rag just to wipe off any excess. Once you add the insert to the arrow, it's vital that you want to lay this arrow on a very flat horizontal surface. This ensures that when it's sitting on that surface, the insert is not going to be sliding around inside the arrow. Um, I've seen it sometimes where guys will go ahead and put their insert in and the insert will fall out of that arrow. Um, then you have different variances of where that insert lays inside there. So you wanna make sure once that arrow is in completely, you wanna lay it on a flat surface for 24, 36 hours and let that arrow dry. And then you will be time to fletch. So now that we have glued our insert in and waited for that glue to dry, we will now reinstall our knock. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and add some of these knock-on wraps that you can get on knockonarchery.com uh, from John Dudley. Um, I like these because uh, if I do mess up a fletch, they're a lot easier to clean um, using this tool. All this is just a fletch stripper. Um, a great tool um, definitely need to have it if you're going to be fletching so once this is clean what you want to do is you want to peel back the wrap and you're going to lay that wrap upside down on the table we have a, a, a pad here so it makes it a lot easier and I like to start from the back side here you're going to line up the back of the shaft where the shaft meets the knock you're going to line that up with the actual decal and you're going to make sure that you're touching that decal in the same spot all the way through slowly pushing until you start seeing that decal and start to move i'm fully touched there now i'm going to apply slight pressure and i'm going to roll that wrap right onto the arrow shaft So here we have the Blitzenberg jig. Um, this I feel is one of the most top of the line jigs out there for the money. Um, it's very precise, very detailed. You can get these arrows um, all exactly the same. There are some other jigs out there that are plastic, but I do prefer the Blitzenberg. Um, so from here, it, uh, it all depends if you want to do a three fletch, a four fletch, a six, eight. Um, the possibilities are endless, but uh, I always stick with the three fletch. Um, here is a three fletch with a blazer vein, a one degree offset. So you can do a one degree, two degree, three degree offset, uh, which is just the pitch of the arrow, and how it is sitting on that arrow shaft. Um, and we also have here a four fletch, just to show you, uh, also with a one degree offset. But you can buy different jigs that will give you the helical, a right helical, a left helical, uh, this is a straight jig, um, and we're going to just add a one degree offset. Um, so each of these fletchings um, for a four, 
fletch um, configuration is 90 degrees apart. On this three fletch, they're sitting 120 degrees apart, 316 a circle. Today I'm going to be going with the, uh, the Max Stealth Veins by Knock On Archery, uh, John Dudley. Um, this is something new I'm trying. Um, I've always shot the Blazer Boning Vein, um, two inch. Um, I liked it because it's low profile, doesn't make much noise running through the air. Um, so I'm, I'm switching over to see um, if this configuration of vein um, is right for this arrow. With the Max Stealth Vein, I have my three fletchings ready to go. What I like to do is I like to take uh, each of the fletchings, put them into my jig, hold them into place. Here we have the Max Weld pen. It's a primer pen that goes on the actual surface of that fletching. Um, what that's doing is making a better adhesion point. It's cleaning the area. Um, so you want to go ahead and just wipe down go crazy. Those two are ready. And we got one more here. And we'll do this one. Now there's two types of glues you can use for this application. You can use a fast curing or you could use a slow curing. Um, for this I like to use a fast curing. Um, this is the Max Bond glue um, specifically made for putting fletchings on. One thing you want to make sure, especially with the Blitz and Cree, is make sure you're not in the middle. You want to make sure that you hear that, that clicking sound. So now I know that I'm perfectly in one of the spots where it needs to be. I will take my fletching. I will line that up, making sure it's in the same place every single time lining up the back of that fletching with that mark that I have made that's specifically for my arrows that I make. And how I got to know the distance is um, really trial and error, but also um, Knock On Archery provides um, on this cool little uh, rat pad um, how far to go from the back of the vein to the throat of the knock. Um, he suggests to start about one and a quarter inches um, I believe I'm just over that, just over one and a quarter inches. So, um, but that's a good starting point, and then you can adjust that from there. Um, there's a lot of variables when I'm building these, but making sure you're consistent and they're all exactly the same is key. Also, when adding the glue, just like you were with adding the inserts, you want to make sure that you're not overdoing the glue and seeping all over the place. Less is more. So, when adding this glue, you're just going to do a light light coating of it, making sure it's nice evenly placed, not too much. And then you're going to set this, you'll feel there's a magnet, slightly press down, you might even see just a little bit of glue coming up. But I like to press that down nice and firm, give it about a good five second count. And then you will open up the jig, pull that off. Any excess glue you can just give a slight wipe to. You now want to take this jig and rotate it, making sure you hear it click and it's in that next section. And repeat the same steps. Now that you have all of your fletchings in place, I like to use a slow cure glue. This is fletch tight. Um, this will take about 24 hours to cure. And this is a step they call tipping and tailing. So you want to make sure that at the tips of all these fletchings you're going to put just a small little dot of glue and on the back side as well. The last step is to add your fuel point. Here is a Saunders combo point, 100 grain, that will screw right into the tip of our insert. And here you have it, a fully done arrow. Thanks for watching Kettle Bottom Outdoors, and we'll see you next time.